Now, Russia says attacks on its border region of Belgorod continued in the early hours of Wednesday. The defense ministry says numerous drones entered the territory, but most were shot down and they caused minimal damage. Russia says it killed 70 fighters that had crossed the border, calling them Ukrainian nationalists. Ukraine has denied any involvement. Well, two anti-Kremlin groups claimed responsibility for the Belgorod attacks. But the U.S. has distanced itself from reports that it supplied the Liberty of Russia Legion and the Russian Volunteer Corps with equipment. Moscow released pictures showing abandoned vehicles in the Belgorod area, including U.S.-made Humvees. Let me say a few things about it. Number one, we've seen um, uh, some of the reports circulating on social media and elsewhere making claims that U.S. supplied weapons were used in these attacks. I will say that we're skeptical at this time of the veracity of these reports. Uh, as a more general principle, as we've said, and, and I believe I said yesterday, we do not uh, encourage or enable strikes uh, inside of Russia, and we've made that clear. Um, uh, but as we've also said, it is up to Ukraine to decide how to conduct this war. Well, let's bring in Anton Shekhovstov. He's the director of the Center for Democratic Integrity and also the author of Russia and the Western Far Right. He joins us now from Vienna. Anton, can you tell us a little more about these groups, the Liberty of Russia Legion and the Russian Volunteer Corps? I know they're now saying they control pockets of territory. Just how large or powerful are they? Well, first of all, hello, and uh, thank you for having me. Um, if we're talking about those two units, I would rather talk about only one unit, uh, which is the Russian Volunteer Corps. Uh, this is a fighting unit that actually exists, uh, not only on paper, uh, but also like in real life. Um, so the Celebrity of Russia Legion, or I would prefer to call it uh, the Freedom of Russia Legion, it's more of a um, sort of a information project that was designed in order to facilitates the surrender of Russian Kremlin-controlled soldiers and officers to the Ukrainian forces, giving them um, hope or an idea mm -hmm. uh, to join uh, Ukraine in fighting the Kremlin. So it's, it's, more, of a, it's more of a project that may, in fact, uh, at, it's at some point in the future, uh, become real, become a real fighting force, but at the moment it's just a project. Sure. As Anton, for the Russian volunteers... Yes, yeah, sorry, I wanted to ask you about the fighters themselves. Um, when, you're caught, when you're talking about the Russian Volunteer Corps, for instance, are those fighters all Russian? I spotted some Ukrainian insignia on their uniforms in a video statement we saw earlier. Yeah, uh, look, uh, they are, of course, they are all Russian citizens. Uh, they are uh, not necessarily ethnic Russians, not only ethnic Russians, but they are all Russian citizens. Mm -hmm. So uh, even if they uh, carry some Ukrainian insignia, uh, it only means that they are part of the uh, Ukraine Armed Forces um, International Legion. Uh, they, they do have this uh, uh, unit, uh, which is quite large unit. It's only, uh, it not only... Uh, has Russian nationals, but also Belarusians mm. uh, as well. Uh, so it's a, uh, they have Georgian legion as well. This is this is just part of the uh, a larger uh, Ukrainian international legion. So this is why they carry Ukrainian insignia. But they are all Russian citizens. Sure. Uh, what are they hoping to achieve? I know they've said previously this is a hearts and minds war that they believe they're fighting. Uh, indeed, but, um, uh, you know, we cannot really talk about one unifying ideology of the Russian Volunteer Corps. Uh, if, we are, if we are talking about uh, one single idea that unites all of them is the idea of the Russian national liberation struggle. Uh, they believe that the Kremlin and Putin and his clique, uh, they have colonized Russian people, that they are uh, pursuing an anti-Russian agenda you know, making Russia, you know, uh, uh, you know, like a failure. Uh, they they, they mm -hmm. consider this war as a as a failure, as a as a conflict between two very close nations. So they are uh, they are fighting to liberate Russia from what they see as the colonizing Kremlin force. Uh, some of them also believe that they want to have a Russian national state a Russian nation state, mm -hmm. uh, which means that uh, they may even opt for a smaller Russia, you know, uh, to, to, to offer an opportunity to non-ethnic Russian republics uh, or territories uh, to cede and form their own states because they really want to have 
Actually, something like Ukraine or Belarus sure. uh, or any, uh, many Anton, other European states. Anton, I'm, I'm wondering where in this fight, where are they getting their weapons? What do you make of these allegations they're using these US-supplied arms? Uh, that I really don't know uh, what, what weapons they are using, what weapons they have and where they get from. I, uh, I can only presume that uh, since they are part of the uh, uh, Ukrainian armed forces, uh, since they are part of the International Legion, uh, you know, this may give us a hint uh, to where they actually taking uh, weapons from. Sure. Anton Chikostov, he's the director of the Center for Democratic Integrity, speaking to us from Vienna. Really great to get your thoughts on Al Jazeera. Thank you for joining us, Anton.